Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome again to another Wednesday night Bible study at Fourth Baptist Church. We're delighted to have you with us tonight, and we praise God for your presence on this uh, Bible study. So once again, thank you so much uh, for joining in with us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Before we get started with uh, our Bible study, Angie Roberts, thank you so much for sharing with us. Before we get started with our Bible study, let us go to God with a word of prayer. Always eternal God, our Heavenly Father, thank you once again for allotting this time unto us that we might study thy word, that we might learn from thy word, that we might, Father God, commit ourselves more and more unto thee. Bless our efforts tonight, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bob Arun, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Uh, Garnett Mosley, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight as well. Amen. Um, Peggy Goulet, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Birthday of uh, Deborah mm -hmm. Williams. Okay. Amanda. Ivy Bond, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, amen. To God be the glory. Onita Allen, praise God for your presence today. Deborah. Um, amen. We're going to begin our Bible study tonight in Acts chapter number 28. I'm sorry, Acts chapter number 25. Amen. <laughs> That's a big mistake there. Connie Baltimore, thank you for sharing with us tonight as well. Listen, let me give a great shout out and a happy birthday. Tanisha Smith, thank you for sharing with us. A uh, big shout out and happy birthday to Trustee Melinda Falk, uh, who is sharing her birthday, observing her birthday on today. Amen. Also, uh, Sister Deborah Walker, a happy birthday to Deborah. Deborah Grimes, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight as well. Amen. Listen, let's chat. We'll reconvene. Juliet Williams, thank you for being with us. Let's chat. We'll reconvene on March the 8th at 7 p.m. Our youth Bible study is uh, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Our Easter egg hunt is March the 30th, and it will take place at City Park here in the uh, city of Portsmouth, and we welcome all of you to join in with us. Don't forget, if you'd like to contribute or donate uh, candy or some other type of uh, thing uh, for the Easter egg hunt, please uh, send it to us, and uh, we will make sure that you get recognition for it. Lillian Saunders Orton, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Wayne Shoemate, praise God for your presence tonight as well. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. This is a big announcement. Big announcement for those of us who live on the East Coast. Amen. Sunday, March the 10th, we began Daylight Saving Time. Amen. So on March the 9th, set your clocks up one hour and so that you can be at church on time on March the 10th. Amen. Daylight saving time begins on March the 10th. Amen. To God be the glory. Debbie White, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight as well. For those of you who are members of Fourth Baptist Church, let me share with you that Trustee uh, Claude Morgan's daughter uh, has passed. And the funeral arrangements are uh, that we will celebrate her life on March the 8th uh, at 1 p.m. at 4th Baptist Church. Now, Melinda Fox, thank you for sharing with us tonight. So I'm asking that all of our ushers will be there, being that Clyde is an usher at our church. And uh, we're asking that the members of our church will support that as well. Amen. Nan, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So... Make sure that uh, we come together, that we might represent. And I would like for all of the trustees at Fourth Baptist Church uh, to be there and set in the body as well. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. We'll talk more about that this coming Sunday morning. Big West, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Listen, if you suffer loss and you stand in need of support as you go through, our grief ministry is alive and well. And we ask you and we invite you to join in with our grief ministry by dialing uh, griefshare.org 
And once you do that, search for Fourth Baptist Church, uh, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, and our church will pop up and they will direct you to us. Or you can dial directly to the church at 393-6657-753-6657, and we will connect you with our grief ministry. Our prayer line continues uh, to be a, a source of strength, uh, a source of inspiration, a source of encouragement uh, to those who are contacting our, uh, our ministry. So we encourage you to call our uh, prayer line, and you can call that number if you desire prayer. Uh, you can dial this number, 267-807-9605 with access code 985155. Amen. Listen, if you are uh, 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 wanting to improve your skills, improve your uh, hiring ability, promotion ability, Momentum Makers uh, will be sponsored at our church. And uh, as we go there, uh, we want you to join in with us. Uh, Dakeisha uh, Gaither, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Momentum Makers is designed for professional skills training. And uh, we have eight classes lined up, not all at one time, but we have eight classes lined up for you to enjoy and to share in with us. The first class begins March the 9th uh, at uh, uh, 9 uh, a.m. And uh, we want you to come, but you need to register. Call the church, 757-393-6657, and register for this class. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for your indulgence and allowing me to make those announcements. Uh, be in prayer for your brothers and your sisters as we go forth. Richard Chancellor, thank you and Yvonne for sharing with us uh, on tonight. I want you to pray for Brother Calvin Freeman. Pray for Dolores George. Pray for Herbert Hall. Pray for Mabel Simmons. Pray for William Smith. Pray for Michael Jones, Marsha Johnson, uh, Ian Washington, Barry Norman, Joe Randolph. Antoine Jones, Patricia Scott, Marcus Dozier, Reginald Carey, Jeanette Shoemake, Lucretia White, Louise Bowser, Anita Allen, Reverend and Mrs. Clyde Doxy, Reverend Frieda Thomas, Francie Hasty, Goldie McDaniels, Suzette Watson, uh, Sharon Hampton, Melinda Falk, uh, Winfred Booker, Miss Audrey Davis, uh, Carol Gore, Pastor Hampton, Sean Orton, uh, Tanik, well, uh, Calvin Gray, uh, Beatrice Coleman, Charlie Howell, First Lady Terry Dortch, uh, Beverly Shelton, Xavier Orton, Reverend Florence Pender, Amen, uh, Cheryl Brown, Carl Mosley, Martha Moss, uh, Dorothy Spruill, Deborah Grimes, Sonia Claude, Beverly Shelton, thank you for sharing with us tonight, uh, Ronald Jones, uh, Jerome Fox Jr., Betty Hayes, uh, Paula Freeman, Juliet Williams, Baby Yara, Louis Brewer, Vera Ransom, Brenda Hardison, Mary McLeese, uh, uh, Patrick Hector, Glenda Morrison, uh, Lillian Orton, Betty and Richard Smith, and Joseph Hector Sr. Amen. Lift those individuals up in your prayers. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Woo! I tell you, that's a lot of names to be calling. But nonetheless, we want to add them to our prayer list, and we want the saints of God to continue much in prayer for them. Roy Coppish, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Our Bible study tonight is in uh, Acts chapter number 25, and we're going to find out how God provided for Paul, how God protected Paul again. Uh, as he deals with uh, the Roman soldiers, as he deals with uh, Jewish uh, individuals that are supposed to be saints of God, but are acting just the opposite. Susan, uh, Susan Austin, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. So, Paul now has been returned uh, as a prisoner in Caesarea. But there are some things that have taken place. As we began to look at this text, Felix, which was the governor then, has been replaced by a man named Festus, okay? And Festus now uh, is the uh, supreme ruler, so to speak, amen. 
And so as he begins to take charge of his reign, he decides to come down to Jerusalem where he will uh, uh, pay homage to the individuals there. Sort of like a celebration lap for the victory that he just received. And as he goes through the celebratory lap, there are some individuals that approached him. And when they approached him, they were not concerned about uh, their own safety. They were not concerned about the economy. They were not concerned about anything but one thing. And that was to kill Paul. So what they did was they got their hearts and their minds together. As we go right into the lesson, they get their hearts and their minds together in verses number one through three. And they make a request of, of Festus. They say unto him, listen, we want you to try this man called Paul again. And we tried to uh, bring him before the court, but it failed. Felix would not allow it to happen. So we want you uh, to try this man, and we want you to bring him from Caesarea to Jerusalem. And while uh, you bring him from Caesarea to Jerusalem, we're going to spring an attack, and we're going to kill him. Now, Festus uh, could have played party to this, but he did not, okay? I think Festus had already... Uh, uh, been warned by the Spirit of God. Maggie King, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. I think he had already been warned by the Spirit of God. And the other way to look at this is God promised Paul while he was in a Roman jail or Roman prison. God promised Paul that he would be with him, that he would provide for him and protect him. Here it is in this first few verses of this chapter. God is going to protect Paul again. So Festus refuses to have Paul sent to him from Caesarea to Jerusalem. But he says unto those who are trying to uh, 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 kill Paul, he says, I'm going to Caesarea, and I want those of you who want to charge this man with a crime or try him, I want y'all to come to Caesarea so that uh, we can try him there. Amen. Lillian Perkins, thank you so much. Oh, for sharing with us tonight. All right. So Festus now tells them, if you want me to try this man, if you want me to uh, hear your argument, then you come with me to Caesarea. These were some religious individuals, uh, but and they were the religious leaders of the day. Isn't it ironic that the individuals, that the Gentiles and, and all of those individuals that are not saved, don't have a problem with Paul at this point. They, they, they don't have an issue with Paul. But, it's, but it is the religious individuals. Notice what I said. I did not say Christian individuals. I said religious. Those who can talk the talk. Those who can dress the dress. Those who can speak the speak. Those who can do all those right things to make you feel that they are on the Lord's side. Amen. Carolyn Flowers, thank you so much for sharing with us. Those are the, the people that attacked them. And here's what I want to say to you today. Let's fast forward to 2024. Amen. A lot of the times you're going to find out that you will not come under scrutiny. You will not come under attack. You will not uh, be lied on or, or whatever from those outside of the church. A lot of times it's the people who sit right next to you, in front of you, or behind you, those who, in their own pious way, want you to feel that they are so religious that they are above uh, reproach. Amen. So when you go to church, I want to say this to you. Don't feel that when you go to church that everybody's saved, because everybody in church is not saved. Amen. Everyone in church... <clears throat> may not know Jesus Christ <clears throat> as the Lord and Savior of their life. Eartha Garrett, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. Love those pictures, by the way. Amen. To God be the glory. I've been reading the remarks. And everybody say, y'all look good, but I don't say nothing about it. Well, let's, let's move on. To God be the glory. Amen. <clears throat> so, these are the religious folk who are not acting religious. Amen. They're not acting Christian. They're not uh, doing what the model that Jesus Christ uh, has already set and established 
and that is a model of forgiveness. <clears throat> and that is a model of forgiveness. Excuse me. <clears throat> they don't have a forgiving spirit. Not at all. So, so here's what I want to say. If your religion, if your Christianity makes you a liar or a murderer or doing something contrary to the will of God, then there ought to be another way. You need to find another religion. You need to find uh, uh, something that is true uh, with you and with the Lord. Amen. If it causes you uh, to not to have a forgiving spirit, if it causes you to act out, if it causes you to lay somebody out, <clears throat> or uh, not only lay somebody out, but to do someone's harm, then you need to get yourself together with the Lord. Amen. You need to do that. And as you do, <clears throat> you will find out that that is not the model that Jesus Christ set for us uh, uh, to, to follow. Jesus forgave everyone. Amen. So here's the thing. How can you love God whom you, how can you love God whom you pray to and worship and all that every day, but yet see your brother and your sister and do them bodily harm, verbal harm or whatever it might be. The two just does not line up. Amen. To the day family, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. Let's look at verse number four and six of Acts chapter 25. Festus refuses their request to have Paul sent down. Now, I don't know whether Festus had a premonition from the Lord. I don't know whether the Holy Spirit spoke to him. I just don't know. The Bible does not say. But what I want you to see in this is that even what Festus believed or not refused or accepted, the Holy Spirit was at work protecting and providing for Paul. Amen. So, <clears throat> a lot of times, my brothers and sisters, we look at what people refuse to do uh, and what people uh, will allow. But in the final analysis, we'll find out that it was all in the plan of God. God had promised Paul protection, and God is following through with that protection on this Bible study. Amen. So, they get down to Caesarea, and Festus now is sitting on the judgment seat. And Festus begins to ask them, what are the charges against this man? What, what, why, why do you want him murdered? Why do you want him killed? And they came up with the same phony charges with no credible evidence, with no credible information. And Festus saw through it. Amen. In a nutshell, he saw through that. Amen. Listen, when you are determined to do right, when you are determined to do the truth and tell the truth, when you are determined... Uh, that, uh, that that God is on your side, you don't have nothing to worry about because I'm here to tell you tonight that the truth will prevail. God will always allow truth uh, to uh, triumph over uh, falsehoods and untruths. Amen. You may have to go through a little something until you get there, but in the final analysis, God will convince your accusers. God will convince the, the judges that you all right. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you've been there. You've been lying on. People have stole from you. People have attacked your character. All of those things have happened in your life. But in the final analysis, the truth won out. Amen. And those who accuse you generally were those who suffered loss or suffered the most. Amen. So now, Paul and it stands before Festus, and Festus gives Paul an opportunity to speak. And Paul says uh, that, that, listen, here's what I need to say to you. <laughs> Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea. The trial goes on, and after the trial goes on, Festus reopens the trial, and, 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 and Festus says unto them, as he sat there on the judgment seat, he commanded that Paul be brought forth out of prison so that they, Paul can see his accusers. And they laid many complaints, amen, against him, which they could not prove, amen. I don't care what people say or what people do. 
Here's the one thing that I want to share with you tonight. And I think I shared it with you last week as well. Don't let it be true. If it's true, then you can't fight it. But if it's false, the Lord will fight your battle for you. Amen. To God be the glory. See, every time you tell a lie, you've got to make up another lie to cover that lie. And, and the lying just becomes perpetual. It keeps going. Amen. So the best thing is tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth. And, and, and God will give you the victory. Amen. So Paul now begins to appeal unto Caesar. In verses 9 through 12, the Bible says that Paul uh, heard all the charges that were labeled against him. And, and Paul now uses a tactic that I call that, that I think is ingenious. Okay? Every Roman soldier, or every Roman citizen had the right to appeal his case to Caesar. Now, what does that mean? Uh, let me give you a, a good example of what I'm trying to say. Every American has a right to appeal whatever case that they're going through to the Supreme Court. Okay. Yeah, I know. Even him too. Yeah. But they have a right to appeal to the Supreme Court. All right. And this is what Paul was doing. Caesar was the highest appeal that could be uh, challenged to this unfair uh, complaint or or, or charges that were labeled against Paul. Above Caesar, there was no one else. Well, we know that God is above everybody. But in the human nat nature, Caesar was it. In our society, the Supreme Court rules and reigns. Regardless of how uh, uh, one-sided they may be, or regardless of their political stance or their political views, which sometimes are totally wrong, and they don't line up with the Word of God, Amen. So we need to make sure that we make our appeals not to the Supreme Court, but we make our appeals to God. Dr. Patrick Emmanuel, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. All right. So now in verse 9 through 12, Paul uses this ingenious idea that he knew uh, that he would probably not get a favorable ruling out of Festus. Now, Festus, they say, was a fair man. But Paul, being led by the Spirit of God, knew that something could go wrong. And people during that time would accept political appointments. They would accept money. They would, you could buy a judge, amen, easily during that time. You could buy a verdict easily at that time, amen. So Festus, and in and, 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 and order not to uh, look one-sided, Festus, uh, Festus sent Paul uh, to Caesar. Peter Dowden, Dowden uh, uh, the second, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. It's always good to see classmates. Amen. So here goes Paul. Paul's warning to the Jews uh, a, a, a favor. Instead of rain, ruling on the, on the case, he says, I'm going to get out of the middle of this. Amen. They're not paying me enough. So I'm going to get out of this, and I'm going to send Paul to Caesar. That's the last thing that these Jewish uh, individuals wanted him to do. But even Festus saw through uh, this scheme that was going on. It's interesting to wonder if Festus uh, knew of the plot or the murder uh, of Paul or not. We don't know. But he did know, if he did know, then he knowingly asked Paul to walk into an ambush uh, and be murdered. If he did not know, then he uh, merely thought that this uh, would please the religious leaders uh, to have the trial in Jerusalem. So here he does. He takes the easy way out. And he says, you know what? Since you appeal to Caesar, I'm not going to rain on this. I'm going to let it go to Caesar where uh, you can uh Plead your case before Caesar. Monica Dewberry says, The good thing about the law, it applies to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think in our society today, we're learning that some people think that they are above the law. Some people think that they have uh, uh, carte blanche uh, immunity 
regardless of what laws they uh, uh, committed. But I believe uh, that in the final analysis, God will deal with all of this the way that God wants it to be dealt with. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, don't, don't worry. Uh, the old saying says it this way, you might get away, but you won't get, you might get by, but you won't get away. Amen. So we're, we're trusting the Lord in that scenario. Okay. So now Paul uh, has been sent to Jerusalem and he's standing before Caesar as Caesar sits at the judgment seat. Amen. So therefore, rightly and wisely, uh, Paul wanted to avoid uh, being a, uh, being murdered, uh, uh, if he could. Paul was not afraid to die. He was not afraid to face the lions. He, he was not afraid to be killed. But at this moment, Paul says, I don't think God is finished with me yet. Amen. So therefore, as he stands before Caesar, his appeal made sense. Amen. He was convinced that uh, the evidence was on his side and that he could win the trial. He also had reason to wonder if his uh, current judge, Festus, uh, was sympathetic to the Jews because Festus was on the tape, y'all. Amen. You can buy Festus in order to keep in favor with those individuals. Festus would take money in a heartbeat. So Paul now gets him out of the way and he begins to defend himself. Now, here's the thing that you need to know about this lesson tonight in a nutshell. Anthony Fenner, thank you so much for sharing with us. We're in Acts chapter 25. And uh, I want you to know this is the thing. God had already appointed courts of law. He gave people a liberty to use the law as needed. But here's the thing. Paul knew Festus's character. Paul knew that something may go wrong and Festus may sell him out. Amen. We have individuals today who are sitting on courts all around the world. Amen. Judges, uh, whoever it might be, who are on the take. Amen. Read the paper and you will find that. Listen to the news and you will see that even today, we have individuals that will not do justice justly. Amen. So rather than taking your burdens uh, to the judge, take your burdens to the Lord and let the Lord work them out. So Paul appealed directly to Caesar Nero. Now, many of you know Nero. Nero was accused of burning uh, the, the city down. Amen. And while Paul waited and others waited uh, to be murdered, Nero was favorable at this time. Amen. But something or someone turned his head against the Jews and against Paul. Amen. We'll get into that in a later uh, uh, Bible study. But Paul appealed to directly to Caesar, who was later on, uh, later a notorious enemy of Christians. But the first thing that Paul realized that the first five years of Nero's reign under the influence of good men and women, uh, Nero was regarded as a wise and just ruler. Time out. This Yvette Williams, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Listen, a lot of times you can start out right, but as people come and go, and you surround yourself with different individuals, please make sure that those individuals know the Lord, Please make sure that those individuals are saved and that please make sure that those individuals are committed unto the Lord. Amen. Nero was okay as long as he had Christian men and women around him. But as soon as they left, Nero changed. Amen. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that there are a lot of churches today that were doing okay. They were doing fine as long as the pastor was there but as soon as that pastor retired or, God forbid, died or left the church, resigned, the church went crazy. Amen, somebody. You see, that's why it is pertinent unto us that we put people in places of leadership 
that love the Lord and are committed to the Lord and not to the pastor. Amen. Because when he leaves, all of his ideas, all of his work, everything that he had accomplished over the last 50, 60 years goes right out the window. And people began to revert back to the way that they used to be. Amen. So make sure that as you select individuals for positions of leadership, that you're getting individuals that, first of all, have been saved, second of all, have a commitment unto the Lord, and third of all, individuals that will say it, and I'll say it this way, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Because you don't want individuals around you that don't mean you any good. Estelle Brown, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. It is paramount in the life of each church, in the history of each church, if you look at it, uh, you will find that the moments when the church prospered the most was the time that they had sincere, committed, faithful leaders leading the church. Amen. Something happened along the way. And I think what happened along the way is that people began to listen uh, to the to the uh, fluid talk, the, the expeditious talk, and the way that people uh, convince you, the smooth talkers of our day. They began to listen unto them and follow them, and things rapidly fell apart in the church. Wanda Hayes, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us today. All right, so please let your mom know that we said hello. Amen. To God be the glory. So, my brothers and sisters, God has already dictated, God has already chosen uh, who is going to lead and who's not going to lead. But Nero was an anti-Christian. He was against Christianity all the way. But yet, he is the leader. And I say that to say this. Sometimes God will allow terrible, bad leaders to come in place so that he can teach you and me to remain faithful unto him and be committed unto the Lord. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, I'm not worried about the political atmosphere. Why? Because I know that God is still in control. Amen. God reigns and God reigns supreme. Amen. So now in verse 13 through 14, we find out that Paul has already appealed to go to Caesar. And uh, uh, so now he's going to stand uh, before King Agrippa. Now, this King Agrippa comes from a terrible heritage. Amen. If you go back in the Bible, you'll find out uh, it was uh, his great grandfather, I believe, uh, that tried to kill Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, tried to kill Moses when Moses was a baby. Amen. And throughout all of the scenarios where you find the Herods and the Agrippas and all, all of them uh, did much damage uh, to the world, much damage to Christianity, much damage to the name of Jesus. So be careful, my brothers and sisters, who you align yourself with. So King Agrippa uh, and his sister Bernice now comes to Caesarea. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they uh, had been there many days, Festus laid plans, uh, Paul's case, before them. Now, can you see how they are passing the buck? Felix didn't want to have nothing to do with it, so he passed it to Festus. Festus didn't want to have nothing to do with it, now he's passing it to, to King Agrippa, to Herod Agrippa. So Agrippa, on the second, ruled uh, 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 a... a a client kingdom, so to speak, of the Roman Empire to the east of Festus Providence. Agrippa was known as an expert in Jewish customs and religious matters. So right away, Festus said, you know what? This guy's an expert. I'm going to turn it over to him. Let him handle this thing. He did not have jurisdiction over Paul in this case, but, but his expertise, his advice, his opinion will prove to be a matter that is very helpful uh, to Festus. He can otherwise uh, 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 tell Festus 
what he thinks ought to be done or should be done. Amen. So Herod Ripper II uh, didn't rule over much territory, but he was a great influence because the emperor, emperor gave him the right to oversee the affairs uh, of the temple in Jerusalem and the appointment of high priests. Now, don't take that as if he's somebody. He is somebody, yes. But all of these individuals, if you wanted to be a priest, if you wanted to be a bishop, uh, all you had to do was come up with the right amount of money and you can buy it. Amen. I ain't saying nothing about that for our society today. During that time, you could buy uh, your name uh, tag uh, in front of your name to be a bishop, pope, whatever it might be, if you had the financial resources. So this is what Paul is dealing with. Paul deals with and understands that all of these guys are on the take. Amen. All of them are on the take. So who do you turn to? Who can you trust? Who can you take your burdens to? Can I share with you, my brother and sister, just like Paul? Paul made one appeal after another appeal, and but Paul knew that he was being guided by the Holy Spirit, and Paul knew that God uh, would vindic uh, vindicate him, that God would exonerate him, and that God will set him free. Paul now has been in prison for over two years. Isn't it strange that over two years, they come again with the same crazy, foolish charges. Two years. And they would not let it go. Amen. This is to let you know just how much these people hated Paul. They really wanted Paul to die. Not because Paul had done anything wrong. Here's the bottom line. and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the end of the story before I get there. The bottom line is they wanted to shut Paul's mouth up talking about Jesus and talking about the resurrection. Amen. They did not want to hear anything further about salvation comes through Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. They did not want to hear anything further about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They just wanted to shut Paul's mouth up so that he would not keep spreading the truth among the people that were there. Because the more you talk about the Lord, the more you tell the truth about the Lord, the more people will get saved and the more people will respond uh, to this truth. And they knew that. So here it is. They are the religious folk of the day, but yet uh, they're acting like barbarians. They're acting like murderers. They're acting like liars. Now, just because you're in a position of leadership, just because you have a robe on, just because you have a title in front of your name or behind your name, does not mean that you truly, truly, truly have been born again. You may have a head knowledge. You may have an understanding of what's going on. But if your heart is not in it, if you have not changed, if you've not uh, 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 developed a sincere love for the Lord, and if you really are not on the Lord's side, you will do anything that the devil possibly convinced you to do. Amen. Think about it. How many times have you seen in church where people just go crazy, but yet they want, they're they supposed to be the most saviest people in the church? Amen. It's because their heart is not with the Lord. Stanford Locust, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Amen. So can I admonish you? that before you hook up with other individuals, make sure you know, make sure you ask God, make sure you ask the Holy Spirit to show you the true character of those individuals, what they believe, and even if they're on the Lord's side. The Bible says that, no, we, can, we don't know uh, who is saved and who is not, but the Bible says you shall know them by the fruit that they, that they bear. Amen. Just watch them. See how they act. Do they follow the model that Jesus has set already? Do they follow the model of forgiveness? Do, do, do they follow the model of, of embracing everyone as, as, uh, as on the same level? Amen. Gerard Dabney, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So make sure that you understand as well as I understand that the Lord is on the side of the righteous. Amen. And we are 
chapter 25 of the book of Acts, verses 14 to 22. Amen. So here again, we find out that as we go along, Paul has appealed, and now Agrippa is listening to Paul. And here's the thing I want to say. Paul had a great desire to preach at Jerusalem, to teach at Jerusalem, to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ at Jerusalem. And in this text, do you see how God is bringing that about? God is going to fix this thing. So now they're talking about sending Paul back to Jerusalem. And Paul now is, is, is getting excited because this is what he always wanted to do. He wanted to stand and preach and teach in Jerusalem to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God is opening up a way, opening up the possibility for Paul to share the gospel. Amen, somebody. Can I let you know, my brothers and sisters, if you truly have a desire to speak about the Lord, to teach about the Lord, and to share the good news of Jesus Christ, God will give you a, a pulpit in, in the projects. God will give you a pulpit on a street corner. God will give you a pulpit in places that you never thought that you would preach or teach before. Amen. So they laid their charges out there, and Paul began to talk, and Paul begins to share with those. And the bottom line is that Paul almost convinces uh, 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 Herod uh, to be saved, almost convinces Herod to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. So as I close the lesson tonight, be of encouraged. Amen. God will make a way somehow. God will provide somehow. God will protect you somehow. God will give you what you need if you have a sincere desire to preach, to teach the Word of God, and to talk about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to share His story because of where you may go or who you may come in contact with. Amen. You've got to have a made-up mind that, 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 that all you want to do is to please God. You've got to have a made-up mind. Amen. Don't look for the pat on the back because it ain't going to come. You may get these words, uh, uh, flattering words, uh, how good you are, uh, and all of those type of things, but don't let that fool you. Stick to the script. Teach and preach about Jesus Christ. Don't let these festuses and herods and all of that because of the position that they hold make you feel like that what you have to say is not important. The God that you believe in, the God that you trust, the God that you depend on, the God that provided Jesus Christ as Savior of the world, will keep his promise to you just like he kept his promise to Paul. Amen. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. Be faithful unto the Lord. Be committed unto the Lord and walk in the way of the Lord. Amen. You can't walk south and north at the same time. Amen. Either you're going with the Lord or you're going to stay with the Lord or you're going to uh, uh, make the Lord ashamed of who you are and what you are, what you declare that you are. Amen. To God be the good. So, before we close, let me just share with you that uh, 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 if you desire to be a blessing to Fourth Baptist Church, uh, then you can do so by putting up the app called Givelify. And when you do that, search for Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. And click on that picture of our church will surface. Tap on that, enter the amount that you want to bless the Lord with. Tap on that, and you've given unto the Lord. Bernie L. Mosley, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. Or you can write a check, address it at Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Slip it in the mail, and uh, we will gladly 
Give God praise and thanks for you. Amen. Thank you, Maggie King. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's the bottom line. Couldn't have said it better myself. Amen. Either follow Christ or follow the devil. There's no middle ground. Amen. Let us pray. All rise, eternal God, our heavenly Father. Once again, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you, dear God, for these brief moments that you've given unto us, uh, that we might come and share in thy word, that we might gain from thy word, that we might be encouraged by thy word, and that we might be inspired by thy word. Bless your people, dear God, that are listening under the sound of my voice. Bless their families. Bless, Father God, uh, their jobs. And uh, whatever they stand in need of, we ask that you would provide it for them today. God, we love you. We praise you and we glorify your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, we'll come to the conclusion of another Bible study. Next week, we'll continue on in the life of Paul so that we might see how God provided and protected him along this journey. Joyce Beeman, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. God bless you. Looking forward to sharing with you this coming Sunday morning at Fourth Baptist Church. See you there at 9 o'clock Sunday school and 10 a.m. Oh, worship service. To God be the glory. Good night, my brothers and my sisters.